Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Table Mon History. So, as you can see right here, we have Palkia Lock back from the um, SP era where um, Pokemon SP were introduced in the 2008 and 2009 um, era of the game. These Pokemon were really powerful, the level Xs were really good and um, I had made um, a decent showing at Worlds 2008, but not quite there, I was one game off from getting top 32. And then in 2009, um, I'm not gonna lie, like my priorities regarding Pokemon, um, or rather Pokemon as a priority was not very high up there. Um, I actually have my 2009 Worlds report right here that I wrote for six prizes, which I'll leave a, a link down below in case you wanna um, you want to check it out but um i i posted and i distinctly remember like that year i was really full on with university and i only played apparently um five tournaments total before worlds two battle roads one city championship one state championship and then national championship so obviously i didn't have enough points to qualify through the rankings but i managed to place fifth at Mexico Nationals and um, the invites did go to top four but um, as usual back then if um, if you didn't have a valid visa to travel to the United States at the time of the uh, Mexico National Tournament that invite got trickled down to the next um, to the next person that had a visa so I ended up getting fifth but I'm pretty sure at, well at, definitely at least one maybe even more people off the top four that year didn't have um, a, a valid US visa to enter the um, to enter into the United States, and so I got the triple down by getting that fifth place um, right there. So I was able to attend the World Championship, and I even posted in the report that um, I had low expectations of the tournament, given how it was my least active season out of the six I have played in. Um, I had made it all the, to every single world championship um, until at that, at that point, right? Um, I knew I did not practice enough and I even chose a deck I wasn't very comfortable with as it doesn't come close to matching my preferred playstyle of decks that have potential to one kill whatever active Pokemon the opponent has. So Palkialog is definitely a deck that, um, and credit to uh, PTG Archive for the image, um, Palkia Log was like a slow and steady wins the race sort of deck. Um, obviously back then I, I still could play any deck, um, just like today, um, very skillfully, but um, I was definitely, it was definitely not my preferred playstyle, right? I preferred decks like um, Blaziken decks, Magmortar, right, from last uh, video, where you could just one hit KO. Um, stuff by getting a lot of things out into play that way you're not super worried about what your opponent is trying to do but rather you focus on your strategy and if you pull up your strategy then you are able to overwhelm your opponent but but I will say that this deck's versatility and the, the choices I let you have um, definitely adds a layer of skill right that those other decks are a bit more linear and don't have um, and yeah the whole idea behind this deck was to Bench Mesprits, lock your opponent out of abilities, keep your opponent under an under an item or ability locks or your Poke Power lock, right? Back then they were Poke Powers and Poke Bodies, not just um, everything comprised into abilities. You also had Power Spray, the only card to ever be able to be played during your opponent's turn, um, actually stopping them from using a Poke Power if you had three Pokemon that's being played, I believe. Um, so this isn't my exact deck list. I actually played a Hunch Crow on top of the Pokemon that you see there um, with a Dark Energy because the Hunch Crow allowed you to snipe um, 40 damage to the bench and with Crobat's um, 10 damage placement, you could snipe um, benched Pokemon before they became um, a threat such as matchups and trap inches and Baltoids and stuff like that. So I really like that Hunch Crow tech. I'm pretty sure it came in very handy at the time of the world tournaments and yeah like like i said in my report yeah i barely played that season i was full in um chemical engineer mode because that's my major from university 
Um, I was also playing a lot of soccer over the weekends and so I was playing in two teams at the time, uh, one on Saturday and one on Sunday. So obviously all the Pokemon tournaments were on Saturday or Sunday. So I'm pretty sure most of the time I just end up choosing going to soccer, right? Uh, being active, doing uh, that physical activity instead of going to play Pokemon. Um, so yeah, I wasn't like paying too much attention to the game back then. So um, I don't have much to say about the season, but this year at Worlds, I did make top 32. Yeah, I managed to um, qualify and I'm gonna read a little bit about uh, my tournament report. Um, round one, I don't, I, I definitely remember this. Um, I donked my opponent. <laughs> um, they only had a single unknown queue and they they drew past with it. Unknown queue is a 30 HP basic that has psychic weakness. And so all I needed to do was fetch Rosen's research um, or use Rosen's research to get a Nuxi and an energy and do 20 damage plus a weakness and the unknown queue was dead and that's how I won round one at Worlds because back then it was um, best of one not best of three right but as you can see like that was okay because take a look at my deck right it has so many different Pokemon and none of them are worth two prizes so like I mentioned in a different video like when you're playing with um, two hit KOing stuff in a single prize meta then games will last at least 12 turns, right? And those 12 turns, like a lot of things can happen. You can plan around things, prepare. You have to administer your resources much more carefully when you have to play 12 turns than currently when you have to play four turns, right? When the game only lasts four turns, you don't care that you discard three of your four copies of Positive Orders because you'll likely only need one to win the game. But if games were single prize attackers, right? Then um, you would have um you would probably need like three of those four bosses orders right so you can't just blindly throw them away uh, but anyways that's once again ranting about how bad 2021 2020 no 2020 2021 standard format has been the absolute worst yeah, i will reiterate this once again the absolute worst standard format the game has ever seen um but yeah so round one, I beat a Japanese player by dunking them. Obviously, they weren't very happy. I wasn't either. Um, round two, I played against... Uh, so he was playing Lux, Ray, Jill, Infernape 4. I'm pretty sure after I dunked him, we played a friendly match since we had all this time. Um, I don't know the, the outcome of the game, but um, he was playing another SP deck. Lux, Ray, Infernape 4 had actually won the US National Championship. Had been very popular at the time. Um, Puka, Kyle Sukovic won the, the US National Championship back then, which back then that was deemed like the biggest tournament, or it definitely was the biggest tournament before um, before Worlds, right? We didn't have internationals back then. Then round two, I played a French player, Herve Marquant, with Matchamp Amphoros. I definitely have never um, seen the Amphoros before. Um, and Matchamp was always an issue for SP decks, obviously, because they could just KO you very easily. Um, so I lost that one and then round three I played against Diego Katsuraga. So just as in 2007 he used my list, I'm pretty sure um, this Palkia log or the Palkia log deck that I used, he had been using for the whole season. He had been uh, using it a lot. He was the expert on it and I ended up copying him that year, um, I think, um, copying his list. And so we ended up playing in round three. Um, he had a stronger start, <laughs> and which seems to be the case whenever I play Diego and he ended up um, beating me back then. So I started 1-2 at Worlds. That was my worst ever start to a Worlds tournament. Um, I think Worlds 2018, I had a, my second worst start or just as bad as this one. Um, but, 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 um, I managed to turn it around. Yeah, then I won four straight, four straight games in a row. Round four, I played against Porygon Z and the ability lock or the poke power lock was just um, too much. Then round five I played against Yasin Sekum, um, Sami Sekum's brother, um, two pretty uh, renowned and really good uh, UK players at the time. He was playing Lux, Ray GL, um, Infernape 4, and my pal Keji was able to, um, to overwhelm him. Uh, the bench damage was just too much. And then round six, I played against Alex Brousseau, or Big Chuck, and once again, another one of the world's top players. He was playing Kingra. He had been playing Kingra for the whole season, basically. Um, he was really good with it. 
but I ended up um, beating him. I don't remember much <laughs> about the game and my description on the report isn't very useful either. But um, I ended up beating him. That was a pretty good victory. Like beating Yasin and um, Alex back to back definitely felt pretty good in terms of like, I don't like playing against friends, right? I, I did consider them friends back then um, and uh, really good players. So even though I wasn't very confident because I hadn't been playing too much uh, that season, I definitely felt pretty good beating them back to back. And then in round seven, I played against Brian Garcia, someone who made it through the last chance qualifier with Wigan, uh, but I was able to, to get into um, top cut. And I was able to get into top cut by beating um, Brian in round seven, finishing with a 5-2 record. And um, I don't know what place I ended up uh, going into the bracket, but in top 32, I played against Jay Hornung. Yeah, Jay Hornung got third place at Worlds that year. Um, he's producing content on retro decks, retro formats. Um, so definitely check him out. He's really cool. His YouTube channel is Jay's Advice. Um, really cool dude. And we had played the year before, apparently. And I like I quote myself. Um, Pre-game, we had a nice chat as we had battled last year at Worlds, where I was victorious in what was one of my most memorable and favorite matches out of all I have played at Worlds. So that was me in 2009, right? Today, 12 years later, I don't remember <laughs> what that memorable moment was. I didn't even remember that I had played against him at Worlds 2008. Maybe he does. Um, if he ends up watching this video or maybe I'll ask him like what happened in our game because I definitely don't remember. I do remember what happened in this one though. Um, at least in game one I had him under log, I had him like fully trapped and he ended up top decking a rare candy to turn the game around. Yeah. Um, I also apparently prized um, my hunch crow so I wasn't able to bench um, his matchup but yeah but like i remember he um what's the Pokemon world still on the name booklet so i distinctly remember i distinctly remember that um like that situation like that top deck was so lucky for him at that point yeah that he accepted that part and even like if you see the world championships 2008 booklet and you check out Jay's profile and like his comment or whatever on like how he prepared for worlds or how he made it or something like that um I am oh not 2008 2009 sorry um let me like I will I will read the phrase to you yeah because even he recognized how lucky he was and something like I he got I got so lucky against Pablo Mesa in top 32 and otherwise I don't know where I would have ended or something like that here give me one second and I will and I will tell you because um, like when I read it I was like wow even he acknowledged um, how lucky he got back then so here we go Jay Hornung wanted Locke to play no part in his success at the Pokemon World Championships. My strategy was very focused, he says. Still, a little Locke never, hurt, never, never hurts. In his top 32 match against Pablo Meza, he found himself locked down in such a way that the only one card could get him out of it. And then he drew that one card. <laughs> so, it's like... In the, in, the, in the paperwork that you have to fill out when you get top 4 for the booklet and whatnot, he mentioned how lucky he got in our match against top 32, right? Out of the whole tournament, the one instance he mentioned is that, so... I mean, I don't know, I like... I know mathematically and statistically, like, luck doesn't exist, things just, like, happen one way or the other and everything balances out in the end. But since 2009, right, since the start, I've always felt like I'm under the... <laughs> I have under average luck overall, um, but like his deck was great. Um, I loved the Flygon matchup. I even I actually have his deck list. I have my my Palkia luck built, and I have his specific um, uh, Flygon Flygon matchup deck built um, from that year, right? Physically built, have them right over there. So yeah, I mean, it was a great experience. Worlds is always a great experience. Um, I didn't play too much. Um, Palkia Log was a really cool deck. The SP era was one of the top eras. It's no 
it's no wonder that 2010 um, or Diamond and Pearl to Arceus is, is like the most popular retro format or the one that a lot of people want to play the most overall um, with webcam tournaments and whatnot. So I don't know. This, this, this is definitely another of the golden eras of uh, the Pokemon trading card game. Um, like this is close to the absolute best. Like this is close to Pokemon TCG at its peak and the last standard format uh, season this past year is Pokemon TCG at its absolute worst. So, I don't know, very contrasting. Um, definitely good memories. Um, just looking at the cards, right? Um, I wish we could go back to these simpler times. Um, but yeah, that's gonna wrap up the video. Um, sorry this wasn't as interesting or I didn't have too much to say, it's just like, I, that was definitely my least, one of my least active seasons, and then for 2010, that was the first world championship I missed. So, um, I'll probably end up combining like, because I don't have much to say, right? I was focused on soccer, I was focused on university, um, 2010 and 2011, um, I just, I didn't participate uh, very actively or at all in Pokemon. So those are the two years that um, are sort of a blank for me, um, then we get 2012, where I did play in Hawaii, and I have a cool anecdote um, where I played against PCG Radio, and he's even made a video about our game and whatnot. Um, and then 2013 and 2014. Anyways, these are, I guess, sort of spoilers, but we'll definitely be moving or fast forwarding to um, through the next few years because I just I didn't play much Pokemon, so I don't have much else. Um, to say about that, yeah, but I will try and actually, I mean, I'll try and like talk about the decks from those eras and whatnot because I'm right now I'm trying to uh, build and complete my retro deck collection and whatnot, so I'll definitely touch upon it at least a little, you know. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed my uh, 17 minutes of uh, me talking about uh, better Pokemon times, and I'll see you in our next video. Bye -bye.